Welcome to Thought Leaders, featuring interviews with some of the best minds in the industry. Today's special guest is popular platform speaker, software vendor, and best-selling author, Curtis Cloak. Hello everyone, I'm Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and talk show host. In this segment, we're asking what is the safe withdrawal rate in retirement? All from Curtis's popular presentation, Cracking the Retirement Code, and his best-selling software, The Annuity Bulldozer. Well, this is the question of the hour, I have to say. I have been seeing some of the secular publications, USA Today. I'm not talking about our true money magazines, Forbes, Fortune, so forth. I'm talking about the regular CBS money, CNN money. We are well below 4% now, man. If anybody thought we were still at 4%, we're still playing between three and a quarter and three and a half max. Now, if I see a case like this and come across my desk, Curtis, I'm looking at that bottom line number, the liquidity, the pension, the social security. This is a great case. These people should be able to go through retirement so easily, it's unbelievable. And then when I sh you show me this and you say, no, they're not gonna make it. How, how can that be? 2.8 million, are just squandering their assets? No, so so just let me tee this up real quick. Name changed here to protect the guilty, by the way. So <laughs> this is a really generic, this is a real case, but with, with name changed. And this is husband and wife, they're gonna retire in less than a year. They want $11,500 of income. Now we're going to inflate the non-medical 3%, the medical at 5%, um, and uh, we've got a $3,000 pension, we've got fairly good Social Security income, and we've got total assets of $2.8,085,000. We've got a lot of money here, 60-40 uh, mix of investment assets. And, uh, and when, when the naked eye looks at this, a traditional advisor, I've shown this in lots of different presentations now in the last few weeks and months, and what I'm hearing is everybody looks at this says, I should work. Well, let's look at something here. And here's the question. The question is, the $100 question, what's a safe withdrawal rate? And oftentimes when I'm doing discovery with a client, as part of the homework before I come back with the math, is I want them to go out to the internet and I want them to Google all the opinions on safe withdrawal rate in retirement. And of course, you know, I know, everybody knows, there's gonna be all kinds of opinions, somewhere between 2.3, probably 2.3% and 5%. That's the range of mm. distribution rate uh, th these articles are gonna tout as being okay and being safe. I don't think anybody's out there saying better than five. I don't think anybody's probably saying less than two, but somewhere in that range, mm -hmm. what's safe? Everybody has an opinion. Biggest question is, now that that one's happened, how often are those gonna happen? Mm -hmm. When are those gonna come up? And these, this leaves the question of what's a safe now, now, when rate. people say, what is a safe withdrawal rate, they're safe from what? Safe from principal reduction? Safe, safe in from, duration. Yeah, safe S for longevity. Longevity. Yeah, there are a lot right. of questions I have. What's well, the, what are we talking about? Right, right. So I want to show you okay. a single picture after all the math and science of that single case study is now completed. Now, these, these numbers of the years from 2015 to 2047, which represent the duration of in this case, the wife living to 95, we're killing him off in this math at age 90. So the duration is the date of retirement, July of 2016, to Kathy's age, 95, just so you understand. And I want you to also see that this is the 5% distribution line. This is a picture of distribution rates to all that math over duration of time, inflating those incomes as, as previously described. And what you're going to see here is somewhere, right when I retire, it, I'm going to be at a near a 4% distribution rate to maybe just a little under. But it isn't going to take very long to, to about 2028 is when I start tipping over the 5% distribution line. Now, I would argue anything above three should be avoided. And we try to get our retirement plans to a three, you know, at as good as or better than a 3% distribution rate. But I don't think there's an academic in America that's going to argue that we should keep these distribution rates less than halfway through retirement below 5%. And yet look what happens when you, when you do a graphical picture over the duration of time with all that math, science, and grossed up tax. Look at the point you're tipping over the 5% mark. Now, nobody's going to disagree we're unsafe. I'm not suggesting that later on, when you get closer to the end, that you can't tip up the distribution rate. But that is way too early. This is not a safe plan. Mm -hmm. And yet, this is a plan, this is a picture of a plan that was provided to these real clients from another advisor's perspective because of what the distribution rate was on the day of the retirement with no 
actual view as to what that looked like over the entire duration. So they're not recalibrating this on an annual basis? That the advisor, this particular advisor, oh. well-noted, well-spoken, well-written, well-authored, mm -hmm. and uh, well-attended by many clientele. He, he missed this point completely. And when I explained and educated the client about one of our core measurements here, distribution rates, they could see in a matter of an instant, once I plugged all that into our software, that this is not a sustainable withdrawal rate. Curtis, when we look at this issue, the, the crossover rate came in too early. Mm -hmm. We know you'd have to actually increase the rate. And these, those numbers out there are just astronomical. Crazy. I mean, just, okay, Crazy. So, so what our job is, is can I mitigate that? Yes. Can I do something about this so I don't have to sweat the longevity of my life and crossing over a, an area like 5%? Let me point out something, Steve. These are static returns I'm using. Mm -hmm. Static returns. I haven't stress tested anything. No Monte Carlo simulations yet. And as soon as I start doing that, the variability of the market with those uh, sequence of returns and variability mm -hmm. versus the Monte Carlo simulations, I mean, this thing could really, really look ugly. I, I wonder how many advisors put the black swan in this, this graph. Yeah. Wow. Well, listen, for more information on how you can use Curtis's revolutionary retirement strategy with your clients and prospects to expand your practice, just click on the landing page address in the video description. We'll be right back with more from Curtis Cloak. This is your website. Few people visit, and if it isn't attracting new visitors, it's not doing its job. Now you can drive more visitors to your website through dynamic content and email marketing with Creative One's Social Media Elite. Capture quality leads faster and easier. Engage your visitors with informative articles and videos to boost your online credibility. Plus, stay connected with existing clients and earn more referrals. All content is customized for you. It's time to introduce your website to the world. Call your Creative One sales team at 800-992-2642 or visit us online at creativeone.com. In this segment, we're asking, what is the safe we withdraw? <laughs> I'm going to go from in, in this segment. Yeah. In this segment, we're asking, what is the safe withdrawal rate in retirement? And what are the key core measurements? All from Curtis's popular presentation, Cracking the Retirement Code, and from his best-selling software, The Annuity Bulldozer. Well, let's talk about this. I, I, you know, we're talking about the safe withdrawal rate in our first segment where we actually started to expand and talk about this. But now we're going to get into the measurements. How do I measure this now? We gave one key measurement in the last uh, segment on distribution rates. But now we're going to, I didn't realize you could pressure test this four different ways. Absolutely. Let's walk through it. All right. So, well, the core measurements, first of all, the looking at the four measurements, first of all, we're looking at it statically without any test of any risk measurements whatsoever. Uh, and, and there are four. So we talked about the distribution. No rates. black swans. No black swans okay, in this right, math right. yet. Okay. So let's look at what the second one is. Once I understand the viability and likelihood uh, or the risk uh, level uh, associated with the distribution rate, the next question I need to ask myself is what is the reliability of income? So it's the ROI of Thrive's software system. Okay, so just to make sure I get this understand it. My first slide, distribution rates, I'm thinking nobody in the public domain is talking over 5% as a safe withdrawal rate. No, I don't think of anybody's doing that. This graph shows that it this is going to have to be higher to make the income for the client. And so we already know Oh, at this age, at 5%, it's going to get higher, and we can't cover it. Yeah, it's, All right, so that's just it's, that. It's in, the logical, it's in the logical belief that we could support. But that the, slide that. was assuming that I actually had income coming in. Yeah, okay. that's right. Yeah. So now this slide says how much of the income. So you see my 100% line represents 100% of my income need, and you see the erosion of this line represents, uh, over time, inflation you know, affecting me. And there's a lot of different things mm -hmm. that are going on under the actual math and science of the case. We didn't drill into all those weeds. But you can see the erosion effect of inflation so that the 100% line represents 100% of the gap. And so the, the question is how much, this green line represents how much of the income is being derived from income you can actually rely on. It's guaranteed. Social Security, it's pension, or it's guaranteed statutory reserve streams of income. No dividends off my stock no. portfolio. No dividends off my stuff. Income, no. income bond accounts. No income bond accounts. Anything right. that has a risk of a default right. 
or failure or variability. I might consider interest rates off of a CD that was a 10-year certificate. Maybe I would consider something like that, for example. Okay. But really, I'm looking for income streams that are reliable, reliable. predictable, and not uh, at risk to something that could take it away. Yeah, yeah, and Curtis, I'm sorry to bring this up, but I think that's what consumers want, mm -hmm. reliable and predictable. Absolutely. So we call that our IROI, mm -hmm. and it, for us, it represents reliability of income. Now, the next picture that we educate the consumer after plugging in all their math, and understand, when I say plugging in all their math, here's what's usually the case. These clients are coming in, either they've seen somebody or they've not, but here's something that's for sure. They're playing a movie in their mind of what they perceive retirement's going to be mm -hmm. and how that relates to the viability of their assets, both income and, and asset resources. And they have the question, we talked about the five fears and the five risks, and their question is, do I have enough? And, and we're plugging all this in and they're hoping to do this and that and the other. And so our goal is to capture a discovery of information that allows them to put deep stakes in the ground of, 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 of agreeing to how long they're going to live, how much income they're going to need when they retire, net of tax, and what date, month, year they're going to retire. So we're creating something very tangible for the math to be calculated. And now we're saying, let's look at the four things that determine whether you should go forward with believing what you believe. And so this is the picture of the movie in the mind of this client. The next question is what I call free liquid assets. What does this mean? Understand there are two types of liquidity. There's allocation liquidity. That, let's assume for a minute that I'm holding a million dollars that I want to preserve for my heirs. It's distributing safely 3% income, just saying I could get that. And that's a $30,000 stream of income for every $1 million I'm holding hostage. But the reality is, if I need 30 grand of income and I'm not willing to take a higher risk than 3% or whatever I perceive is safe to give me the 30 grand, I'll have to hold that million dollars hostage. I have, allo have allocation control, mm -hmm. I have allocation liquidity, but I don't have spendability or discretionary spending ability. I have no free liquidity of mm -hmm. that. I, I have to hold it hostage. And what this chart says is if, if that line falls to the bottom before I get to the right, I have no free liquidity. I have allocation liquidity, but I don't have discretionary liquidity. Do consumers want this kind of liquid asset? Absolutely. And when you talk about liquidity, they think that's what you're talking about. When most of the time in the investment world, we're talking about allocation liquidity, mm -hmm. and we don't understand we're not talking about real liquidity, free liquidity, spendable, discretionary liquidity. Almost doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. The last of the pictures is a rhetorical one. What does it do to my portfolio when I look at all these charts? In this particular case, I'm consuming dollars. And Steve, you asked the question, what if I stress test this thing? Well, as soon as I stress test this, even a little bit, second year, negative 10%, I actually run out of money before I get to the end, and I blow up all this chart. I'm already blown up here, but my distribution rates get worse, and my reliability of income gets worse. And so as soon as I start stress testing this, and, and, and I don't have any net worth, this is a really terrible situation mm -hmm. that I'm showing, and yet I had $3 million, and I'm expecting that, uh, I'm expecting that I've got enough money because of my pension, my Social Security. Well, before I end the segment, I just want to say the title of his slide, which I find is more revealing than anything else, the normal SWIP solution with no, no guarantees. guarantees. It should have no guarantees, static data, no black swans. You know, it should have all that in there. Yeah. Then you go, if that's the best scenario, what could be the worst scenario? Yeah. Well, for more information on how you can use Curtis's revolutionary retirement strategy with your clients and prospects to build out your business, just click on the landing page address in the video description. And for more information on our shows, seminars, workshops, just follow us on social media or visit us out on our homepage. I'm Steve Savant. We'll see you next time on Thought Leaders. And remember, keep thinking outside the box.